This is the reason why your life isn't getting better. Now you've probably seen the scene from The Matrix where Morpheus offers Neo the red pill or the blue pill. Basically, you can stay in The Matrix or you can wake up to another version of reality. But they were wrong because in reality in life, you have three decisions. Now that third decision is the decision to either run towards something you love, run away from something that you hate, or unfortunately the third, which is the most dangerous, which is stay the exact same and freeze. Now this video is going to focus Focus on that third one because it is the insidious path that many of us end up taking without realizing we're making a decision. What's up guys, it's Alex Hine, author of Master of the Day. Let's get in it. So in reality, you have three decisions in life when it comes to any macro major decision. You can run away from it, like run away from an abusive person you're dating. You can run towards it, like you can pursue someone that you are fancying or you're in love with or chase that job you want or try to write the book that you want to write. Or you could do option three, which is what so many of us do, which is absolutely nothing. Now the freeze response is the most dangerous because in your mind, you don't think you're actually making a decision at all, but in reality you are. You're making a decision to resign yourself to fate and whatever your boss thinks is going to go. Whatever the macroeconomic climate is, is going to influence you. Whatever your significant other wants to do is what's going to happen, whether they're healthy or whether they're toxic. So the freeze response, AKA not deciding, is the most dangerous response you can have in your life because it is a decision. And it's the decision to, you know, I'm just gonna stick my head in the sand, hope that nothing changes, and then everything will be fine. A perfect example I like to give is, for example, when I was in my early 20s and feeling very lost in life. I thought that, you know, well, maybe if I just don't address my financial life, it'll all work out in the end. You know, I'm gonna go to school and I'm gonna take on this debt for my undergrad and I'm not gonna worry about the loans until I just get to my whatever, 30s. And what happened was I got to my 30s and my indecision, remember freeze, not deciding, eventually caught up with me. Because now, not only did I have undergraduate loans, now that I've done a doctorate, I also have doctoral medical loans, which were the two combined. And once I was seeing that and I entered panic mode, then I actually formed a plan to actually do something about that. And in the same way, what happens is for so many people, the reason that we have life regrets is that we say, when I'm 40 or when I'm 50, I'll have written a book. And yet the problem is we went through our 20s and then we go through our 30s and then we're like, oh crap, I'm 39. And I said next year was gonna be the year that I actually write the book that I've always wanted to write. And now we wake up on the eve of our 40th birthday. We haven't even written down the title of our book and we're still delusional enough to think that one day I'm gonna wake up and it's just going to be written. I would say all of this just to reiterate the fact that not doing anything is the most dangerous action that you can take in your life. It is better to decide for or against something, but to make a decision than it is to stay the same. Now, the second thing to think about from a macro point of view is that the pain of discipline is not as painful as the pain of regret. Now this is a quote from the author Jim Rohn and I absolutely love it for a few reasons. You know, I've put together a free seven day self growth challenge and one of the videos we talk about, it's the link right below this video, is this exact concept. Because while anyone can begin changing their life over a course of seven days, it's the whole point of this little free video series I've put together, while anyone can do that, the question is, many of us will put things off until they are so painful that now we are forced to change. Most of us will wait to the eve of our 40th birthday to write the book because now we're feeling like a loser because we didn't do anything in our lives and now we're 40. Or for so many of us that are just too busy coasting, you know, gained 10, 20 pounds, maybe started smoking a little bit of weed at night because it just helps you unwind, doing nothing on the weekends just because it's a little bit easier and it's a little more restful. We need to be broken up with by the woman we love in order to actually take action and do something different in our lives. That is unfortunately more true than it is not true for most of us. Now, an example I like to give is in my doctoral program, which is a full-time medical program. I mean, it was 50 or 60 hours a week. I was one of the only people to work 20 hours per week. Do you think working 70 or 80 hours a week is fun? Nothing about it is fun. It's the ultimate sacrifice of working 12 hours a day, basically every single day. Sunday was a half day of work, only working six hours. And it did that for four years. And it was one of the hardest things I've ever done and one of the most damaging to my health, ultimately. But now years later, where I'm back to normal and I'm feeling well, I can look back on that sacrifice of being in class or studying 
nine to six, and then having to work six to 10, and then working every single Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, when I would much rather just relax on the couch, go work in a cafe, or just sleep in, I can now look back after those four years, and I have one fifth of the student debt I would have had that my colleagues, now medical professionals also have. And many of them will never pay off that debt until the day that they die. And I made that extreme sacrifice because I knew that it would be four of the hardest but most fulfilling years for a lifetime of being debt free. And that was a sacrifice that I was willing to consciously make. So for you, it may mean making a similar sacrifice. The sacrifice to come home and work on your business for two or three hours every night. So that in two or three years, you're not going home and complaining to your spouse that you hate your job so much. And you're not having collateral damage of being unhappy and going home to drink two glasses of wine or you've gained 20 pounds because you're always eating out because you're unhappy. The pain of discipline is less than the pain of regret. Now, the last thing I wanna leave you with is that change in life comes from changing the little things, not from having these massive, massive, massive goals because your day is ultimately a reflection of rituals and your life is a reflection of your days, right? I wrote this whole bloody book to explain that. Ultimately, the way you change your life, for example, you go from being a smoker to a non-smoker, or someone who's 20 or 30 pounds overweight to someone who's in shape, or someone who's consistently negative and pretty depressed for mental reasons, not physiological reasons, to someone who's relatively upbeat or at least neutral is by changing the little things regarding the way you live day to day. It's when you wake up, you decide that, you know what, this is not my most happy phase of life. I don't like where I live. I can't afford to do anything. I can't afford a vacation. I don't like my job. I have no friends or I have negative friends. My family doesn't support me. And yet you can decide that, you know, one of the rituals I'm gonna do to help my mental state is I'm gonna listen to an audiobook, a self-improvement book every morning, just for 30 or 40 minutes. And it's going to be positive and instructional, and it's going to help me get focused on how to start my morning off right. And then in the morning, I'm gonna start making better decisions for breakfast. And in the evening, after my nine to five, I'm gonna work out because I know as soon as I walk in that door and sit on the couch, nothing gets done the rest of the day. Those little decisions are what turn a clinically depressed person, barring certain medications and barring if it's a really, really deep physiological issue to someone who's now neutral or even positive and a little bit optimistic about the future. And in a year, they're now 10 pounds lighter, they're happy, they're motivated, and they're actually working towards their goals every day for the first time in their life. The way you change your life is from the little things. And while you may have those big macro goals, those big rocks, those rocks have to ultimately come down to a tiny ritual you do every single day to feel better. Now, these big rocks is something that I talk about a lot in my best year goal setting program. This is something where we talk about how do you actually turn a big rock into a daily ritual, a master of the day daily ritual. If I had to pick my life and turn it into a day, what does that look like? So we discuss how do you figure out what those big rocks are that will change your life and what are those daily rituals that are going to do that. Now, I've just launched something brand new, which is called the Monk's Courtyard, which is a collection of about half a dozen courses I have on how to basically design your dream life going forward. So you guys can check it out. We have a time limited special because this is a brand new thing that we haven't offered before, but check it out down there below because like I said, the best year goal setting program talks about everything we've talked about in this video, but in depth. But in general, the main thing that I wanna leave you with here is that don't freeze and procrastinate on designing your best life. Because while it's, yes, it's hard to fight, yes, it's easy to flee, it is even harder to make a decision when the tendency is to want to stay the same. Because it feels safe, it feels secure, but it isn't. Because one day you're gonna wake up and realize the price of inaction was actually very, very high. So before you guys go, I actually talk about this in a related video on designing your dream life right here.